We're just picking up from where we left last week. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, According to his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4. Through which he has given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. So that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. Somebody shouted loud divine nature. You may be seated. We're talking on the subject of bearing the image of the Father. And in this third message, we, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into what is the DNA of God. And last week, we, we left from this scripture that God, we be the image bearer of God, and we have the divine nature that is trusted to us because it's the promise of God that we would be partakers of God's divine nature. Heavenly nature is trusted to us. We also saw First Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 47, 40, 49, verse 49 particularly says that according as we bore the image of the earthly man, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man which is Christ Jesus. So every human being has two images. God has trusted mankind with two images. One is the earthly image which we are born with and that is the sinful image, the fallen image of Adam. Then according to the word of God there is another image and that is a heavenly image given to a man. And to those who believe in Christ because they are born of him according to the word of God in John chapter 1. That they are born of God and they are not born of the flesh or the desires of the flesh but they are born of God. So once they are born of God they bear the image of God. Amen. And now we're reading Second Peter. He says that we are trusted with a divine nature. We're not only born of God. We have his nature as well. Divine here the word is used theos. The Greek word theos. It means God-like. God-like. Theos means God-like because theo is God. The Greek word here used is theos or divine. It means God-like, the replica of God, divine. And then we find the nature, another word used here, phosis. P-H-U-S-I-S, phosis for nature, which is used for nature. Now, the theos is divine, is God-like, and phosis is word used, Greek word for nature, but it's not an ordinary word for nature is something that germinates and expands exactly like the origin it has. Amen? So the nature word used is, is forces and is something that is it, it grows, it doesn't remain in there and is, is something that, that expands to its original image. It's productive. Is the extension of the original. So when we say that divine nature of God, Theos, forces, we are saying that the godlike nature that grows and expands and becomes exactly like God. Amen? Amen. The nature that becomes and grows and becomes exactly like God. Now, Bible speaks about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. But we all with our faces having been unveiled, having beheld the glory of the Lord as in a mirror. 
chapter 3 verse 18 second corinthians are being changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the lord's spirit so theos forces the god's divine nature which is exactly like god it germinates it grows it expands to become like exactly the origin where it comes from now paul puts it this way that we behold the face of God, we behold the image of God like something in a mirror. Like you go in front of a mirror, you see yourself. You're beholding an image. You're beholding a mirror. You're beholding yourself. And you're looking at it. He says, just like that, what we see in the mirror, we, we, he says that we are being changed into that image. We are being changed into the image from glory to glory. It means there is a different levels of growth that God takes us. And every time we continue to grow in him, we become more and more like him. Our faces are veiled, are covered, but we are looking into a mirror. And who we see? We see him. What was last week? Whose image you bear? When they showed him the coin, he says, is it rightful to give it to Caesar? And he says, what inscription it carries? Because whatever the image it bears, it belongs to that entity. If it bears the image of the Caesar, it belongs to Caesar. Now Paul says, we see the image like we're seeing something in the mirror. It's not clear. Because when you take shower, there's a mist on the mirror, and you you know you try to wipe it, try to find find your way out. Amen. We never had heaters. My word, you know the the geezers in oh, where I grew up in the cold of winter, you you know you you have cold water shower. You know not even shower water in a bucket, and you just pour yourself in just thirty second uh, bath. Now you, now we have this, you know, you, you have this steaming shower even in the, in the summer and then there's mirror and you're trying to wipe it. Why? Because you're trying to look at the image. It's blur and that's what Paul says. He says, it's veiled, our, our faces are veiled. We can't comprehend it fully. We don't understand his ways because his ways are higher than ours. We don't understand all that he has in our lives. But we're beholding his image like one beholding in a mirror. And sooner or later, we're going to have the full, full picture of what God is doing in our lives. But he says, but meanwhile, we are changed and transformed into the same image because we are created on his image we don't look into mirror to find ourselves be like someone else no we're beholding the image of the Lord God and we want to be like him it's blur our faces are veiled but we're becoming more he says we are being changed the divine nature with us taking us from glory to glory and slowly but surely yes I have my struggles I have my pains and my challenges and my circles in life but I'm still beholding the image that he has given me I'm holding into the nature that he has trusted me and sooner or later I will be like him I'm being changed into the same image Hallelujah. But you see in a mirror. And what you perceive in a mirror. You are being changed into that image. If you see yourself all fat and ugly and not desirable. You are being changed to that image. What do you behold in front of the mirror? Amen. The Bible says that we have put off. The old man. Again it talks about the old man and the new man. So there is an earthly image and there is a heavenly image. Write down this scripture in Colossians chapter 3. Verse 8 to 15. But I'm just going to read what, verse 8 to 11. But go home and read the four, seven verses from 8 to 15. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 to 15. 
Bible says, but now also put of all things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, shameful speech out of your mouths. Verse 9, do not lie to one another. Having put off the old man with his deeds. What was the old man? The earthly man. The carnal man. The carnal image. Verse 10. And having put on the new. What is the new man? The heavenly man. The heavenly image. Christ like transformed from glory to glory. He says, having put on the new, having been renewed in knowledge, according to the image. According to what? My God. According to the image of him who created him. He says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, so it doesn't have a gender, it doesn't have a race. Every other earthly background is diminished. You are one in Christ. The earthly man had his own genetic code and it had his own failures and it had a race and it had all that kind of stuff. But the heavenly man does not have a gender. It does not have a race. It has no color. It has a heavenly DNA with him. And that what God is seeking. Where we see each other beyond colors. Where we see each other beyond tribes and, and the language. And all that that comes with the earthly fallen image. He says put off the old. Because the new one is a heavenly image that God has given you. You are being transformed into the image of God. Last week I shared with you that the Christ, Christ was the express image of God. And the Bible says that we, we beholding the Lord, we beholding Christ, we becoming like Him. So the new man, everybody said new man, my new man is like Jesus. Your new man, your heavenly man must be like Jesus. Hallelujah. So no gossip, no lies. Hallelujah. You can't walk in the newness of a new heavenly man while still having the habits of the earthly man. The corrupt habits. He says, put off. Take off. Hallelujah. Anger. I haven't seen angry people like people in the church. My God. And I'm talking about believers who are in the church for so long, but they're so angry. That's not of God. That's not mature spiritual maturity. Where does the anger come from? Because if it doesn't have a root from God, it definitely has a root from somewhere. Is the old image, is the fallen image of the natural man, Adamic nature. First thing he mentions, he says, put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, shameful speech out of your mouths. He says, those are the deeds of the old man. You can't be the image bearer of God. You can't carry the divine nature and DNA of God while still lingering with the damnic nature, the earthly image of man. He says, put it off. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, put it off. Hallelujah. When you walk these doors, I beg you, keep your anger, your wrath. Keep them in the car. Take them off, you know, just put them in the cubby. No one steals, it is yours. It's your issues. When you walk these doors, put on the new man, the heavenly man. So we can feel some love in this place. Hallelujah. So we can feel some embrace. So we can embrace one another in love. Put off anger and wrath. Those are the old clothes, the grave clothes that we still love and cherish. Bible says again in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 28 to 31. 
He says, but we know all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So these powerful scriptures reference are all about bearing the image of Christ Jesus because he was the expression of God's image. Amen? Amen? It says for him to be the firstborn amongst many brothers. So he says that he predestined us. You are here not because you are very good and God saved you so your good heart and brought you to church into his family. No. You're here because of his grace. You're not too righteous. Amen? You're not too righteous to be called his sons and daughters. It's by his grace you're here. And he knew you and he predestined you to do what? To do one thing that you can be conformed to the image of his. So when he sees you, you want to see Jesus. So when people see you, whose image they're seeing? When you look at the mirror, whose image do you see? Do you see a heavenly man or earthly man? Because we are called to be conformed to the image of the one who has called us. We are called to be conformed to the image of his son. It means our talk must be like him. Our walk must be like him. Our heart must be like him. And that's how we're going to reflect his image. But what do people see when they see you? Tell your neighbor, conform to his image. Hallelujah. We are called to conform to his image. We are the image bearer of the Father. Seed of revival. We started, we started with set the seed of revival, seed of restoration. Why? Because we, were the, we are the image bearer of the Father. Restore of true worship with replacement, substitute, the seed of change that the world is seeking. Because we bear the image of the Father. I was trying to look through how I can define in simple terms about DNA and I failed miserably because most of the things are just going over my head and I struggled so much amen Bible is so simple but these you know when you have to find out these things from the world sense it, it, it makes no sense I, I had a headache after reading one article <laughs> Some of the words I couldn't even understood about DNA. I'm like, what on earth? The Bible says just be conformed to his image, you know. We're partaking of divine nature and it's so exciting. And now you're trying to, you know, find out how the, the world will look at it, you know. You, you're presenting your case and it's such a headache, you know. But how a man can have two births. How a man can be born again because to, to carnal mind it doesn't make sense. Amen? Now, DNA is, I, I wouldn't go into details all these terms, but something that stood out for me was so significant. That they are, in all living organisms, they are actually self-replicating material. And the DNA doesn't die. That's why they can dig a grave after 2,000 years. And they can still find out where the person was, what happened to him, by simple DNA samples. Even if the bones are rotting and they can find one hair, they can trace back to the original. That's how powerful it is. It doesn't die. It's crazy. It, it determines the structure. They can take small a spit. And they can tell you your eye colors. What kind of hair you had. What should be your height like. Why? Because it carries this genetic code. The structure of the living organism. It can be. The DNA is found in every living thing. 
even in the plants, animals. Any living thing has a genetic code and is found in every particular of that organism. It can from head to toe. Even in your spit, there's a traces of your DNA. Amazing. How amazing is that? And it doesn't die. The most insignificant things in your life, in your body, carry your DNA. Spit is the most insignificant. Carries your DNA. Put a swab in your mouth and they just know everything about you. Where you come from, what race you are. That's how powerful when God speaks of the divine nature, God's genetic code in us. The nature, the theos, the replica of God because the DNA, it multiplies. I have, if I have Elijah, he carries my DNA. And when he, he says that Theos forces, it means that we carry God's genetic code. The nature of God. The extension of God. Even if you do not realize upon your salvation, you're given a divine nature, a God genetic code, DNA within you, and it cannot die. It's been there. Sometimes we don't tap into it and we don't acknowledge and realize what God has given us because we refuse to behold the image that we see in the mirror. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. That's why people when they go into sin habits or circle in their lives, conviction hits them. Why? Because the genetic code, God's genetic code, the heavenly man's genetic code within them tells them, this is not you. Where does the conviction come from? Because they have a heavenly man image. They have the image of Christ. And that image cries out, conform to the image. Conform to the image. Conform to the image of his son. It does not die. And it wants to be seen from your head to toe. It wants to be seen when you open your mouth. They must be able to identify your DNA even from your spit. That who you belong to. What kind of walk you walk. What kind of DNA you carry. Because if you carry his DNA, then you are conformed to his image. From one level of glory to another. And you continue to change. Change for good. Because you are becoming like him. As the children grow, we discover more and more about them. And exciting is, exciting thing is when they, we find out that they're doing things what we like to do. Not all things happen all of a sudden. More they grow, the more they see us. It's already in the genetic code. I remember we, we, we have normally this month, this June, temperatures are rough, roughly 45, 48, 50 degrees in Pakistan. I was just showing an image, a picture to my father-in-law just day before yesterday of an egg. It fell on the, on the hot tar, you know, on the road and it got fried in seconds. So the guy took a picture of it and posted it on Facebook. That's how hot it is. And we, we will live that. So you can put a stake outside on your car bonnet, come back after five minutes, nicely done. Well done, you know. If, if you want medium to well done after two minutes, you can go check it out. And, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm telling you the truth, this affects, you know. I just break an egg, you know, put it outside, you finish. Now, you have these summer holidays because of the heat. And it's three months. Three months because the temperature remains from May up to June, July, uh, end of July, beginning of August. Three and a half months you have these summer holidays because children collapse in the schools. And we don't have small classes like, you know, only one, one teacher to 15. No, no, no. You're looking at 100, 100 students to one, one teacher. And it's a big class, you know. And you find that two, three collapsing right in the middle of... April in May and then the schools are shut down for three months during that time I should go to my mother's house she was born and brought up in a farm 
Amen. My grandpa had a lot of herds, buffaloes and sheep and goats and rooster. Now immediately after the, the, the heat wave, you find in the middle of August the monsoon starts. You have seen monsoon? Yeah. The first few days of monsoon we just enjoy it. We play outside in the rain. Everything happens in the rain. You know, you just go outside, you just breathe in the rain. We should play cricket in the rain. That was the way we should look forward for the rain after such a terrible heat. But the problem with monsoon is it, big, it brings a lot of flood. A lot of destruction. Because now you're looking at non-stop rain for two weeks, three weeks, even up to a month. Non-stop rain and you don't look for the just drizzle and the cloud goes and the sun comes out. Like we have a very funny weather here, you know. They call it a mother city. I, I say it's a child city, you know. One time he's crying, the other time he's, he's laughing, you know. It's, it's just too much happening, you know. <laughs> so now the, it's, it's constant rain. And I remember once in my uh, school holidays when I was by my grandparents in this farm, the monsoon started. It started earlier. It washed away all the roads and I couldn't go back home. And there were no phones that time. Amen. School had started but there was no roads. There was no transport for me to go back home. And amazingly now, it's, it's, I remember I will never ever forget that. Particularly this one night it was storm. The the crops were flooded. My, my, my grandpa should harvest wheat and rice. And I remember they had this storm in that night. You couldn't even go out to check on the animals, the barns, you know. It was just flooded and the animals were all over it. But it was impossible for you to do anything. You just had to wait for the morning. And you know when the rain went down and, and in the morning now, my uncle, my cousin, grandpa, everybody is going out to see the damage. And I will never forget, I was with my cousin, my elder cousin, and I'm going into this barn and there are buffaloes one side, you know, gathered together in one corner because of the storm. And the roof was taken off. And then there was the, my, I should love these Chick, chicks, you know, hens and roosters, that couple of them, because you get, everything is organic, everything. There is no money in, in that village, even up till now, you barter things, you know. You bring your grain and I give you fruit, you bring your grain and I give you sugar, whatever you need, you know. So that's how they grow, they grow their own food, they grow their own meat, everything, everything. There's no concept of, uh, you know, the canned food or freeze or whatsoever, it doesn't exist. Now I was very interested in that hen house because I was the one in the morning very excited to get the eggs and that was the breakfast. Amen? So I, that was my never I went in there and the, there must be 10, 15 of those eggs and that the most delicious breakfast ever. Fresh, warm and there you know it, and I went to this hen house it was completely destroyed. Some of the small chicks were dead. The hens, the herd of hens were just on one side. And then there was, there were two roosters. I couldn't find the other one, but this one was actually buried, literally half buried under the rubble. It had hay on it and all the planks and whatsoever. And I saw the movement of this rooster. Five o'clock in the morning. What he's doing, his feathers are all gone with the wind. He's just skinny bones and he's trying to get up from that rubble. He's shaking himself and I'm standing in mouth trying to find out what's shaking underneath. And there he comes up. Hardly any feathers left. He stood at the rubble pile and he crows. I couldn't believe. He shaked himself of that dust, that mess. Hardly any feathers left upon his body, but there he is trying to find his way. It's five o'clock and I need to crawl. 
I'm all broken up and bruised. I got dead chicks one side, all my children. But my genetic code, the DNA within me tells me it's five o'clock and I need to gather myself and climb this heap upon. And I need to stood on it like any other day. Just take my chest out and tell the whole village, wake up, it's a new day. It's a new dawn. With his feeble legs. Because it was in his DNA to declare the new day every morning at five o'clock. And though the night was rough, the nature, the nature that God embedded in the rooster was still there, intact. And it was not worried about the earthly flesh that was literally ripping off his body. He was not worried about the circumstances that surrounded the whole night. One thing he knew that though the sorrow may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I might be going through hell, but there is a God DNA with me and you cannot keep me down. This rooster stood up. And I will never ever forget that, that rooster. With all pride is just up. No hair left. No feather left. Hen house is broken down. Chicks are dead. Half of his wife, he doesn't know where they are. But he's standing. Why? Because the genetic code, the DNA tells him that it's time to rise. And it's time to declare of the new dawn. The new day has come. If you are not going to declare it, who's going to? It's your responsibility. And that's the DNA all about. A genetic code that cannot be destroyed. Even if you're dead and gone, it will remain there. Amen. God genetic code. God DNA, what is embedded in you, your gifts, your talents, and everything that comes with it. One of the amazing thing about that story also stood out for me. And that was, even though going through all that has happened that night, he remained in control of who he was. Amen? The circumstances couldn't hold him back. To reflect his true nature. And often you know we give up. We don't want to be too religious. When we're dealing with people. Because they might shun us. We compromise with our values. Turns your Bible with me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let's read these four verses. And God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the flesh, over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Everybody said dominion. Dominion. Say it loud. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28. And God blessed them. What did he say? God blessed them. This is so powerful. And God said unto them, be fruitful. Everybody say, be fruitful. And multiply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. 
Verse 29, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herd bearing seed, every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the all earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. Verse 30, And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And so it was. And so it, and it was so. This is God creating Adam. He's, he made Adam and then he says that he, um, he gave them dominion. The Bible says he give, gave them dominion. Everybody said dominion. dominion. And he gave him power over everything. From... From the herbs to the fields to creatures, the birds in the air, the fish in the ocean, everything was placed under man's authority. One of the desires that still remains very strong and even though all this was taken away from man at the fall. Amen? He had authority over everything, that's why he could name everybody everything in the garden at the fall it was taken away from him but the desire to rule did not leave Adam why because it was in his genetic code amen it was in his DNA to be in charge And I want to leave you with this question and some other time. I'm, I'm going to take away this series now. We're going to start it out. This is the same series of Face of a Man. Remember? We, we went a couple of messages and now I shared with you three. And then after a couple of months from now, I'll share with you again from this series. Okay? Face of a Man. Desire to rule and be in charge still remains very strong in man's heart. And that's why they struggle in relationships. Why? Because we want to know who's in charge. Who has the last say. And what should be done because the desire to rule is so corrupt in man. It has become so corrupt because now it comes in a negative sense. The question remains... The fight remains in relationship. Who's in control? Parents and children have struggle of who's going to rule the house. Hannah is as small as she is three years old. She wants to control the TV remote. <laughs> and it's like, who's teaching you these things? Aren't you supposed to respect me, your father? I'm in charge in this house. And then you go, Dada, no, you are not. You better put that TV on. It, it, it's it's in, the, in the genetic code of humans. And because it's in there, the enemy has twisted it around to a capacity where it has turned ugly. Siblings call over toys. They quarrel over playing places and whatsoever over food. Why? Because the genetic or the DNA in man got embedded it that you will have dominion and power over everything. Business competition. We have pizza war going on. Some of you read that article, I don't know. Roman pizza is going up against war with some of the other big businesses and it's competition. Everything is competition. Everything is competitive. Everything want to prove that I'm in charge, I'm in control, I'm better than you. Sports team are fighting for ranking. The desire to rule is so strong in man that it has literally marred the image of God. That there is a constant battle in every flesh. People who have been in charge in departments in the ministry. It struggles. It's a, such a struggle for them to, to leave and come in, come in alignment with what's happening in the ministry now. Because they were in charge and they are no more. 
is a struggle. So you know that you can alter the, the DNA. I was shocked to see that you can alter with every time you go the x-rays and ultra rays and all of that. It can alter your genetic code. That's how they are trying to now come up with new science where the children will be born with how you like them. If you want the blue eyes, they will put the genetic code in their DNA to have blue eyes and certain color hair because they will alter the genetic code, the DNA, in, in the womb. So what was intended as the image of God in man, Satan has altered it and have made it ugly because now there is disunity, there is jealousy, there is competition, there is ugliness, there is fights because everybody wants to be in charge. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to pick it up from here. I'll speak with you about dominion and authority. We are having a series on, on the first, the early church. And I shared with you on the power this past, sun, past Wednesday. And we're having some very, very powerful time because I'll be going through the essence of power this week again. And we, we are really blessed. But now I'm, I'm just giving you a snippet of what we're going to discuss next on this topic, on the image of God, the face of a man. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is what I want you to go with now. Don't think too much about this. You know what? Yeah, oh, I need to rule because God's image in me says, I must, ish. Hey, thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> the image of God within you makes you like Jesus, who in all humility submitted to the will of God, to the Father, to a point of a damned death, ugly death on the cross. That's the image that God is conforming us into. The genetic code, the DNA of God within us to rule is to rule our own world where we are not dictated by the circumstances like the rooster. Rooster was in charge. Because he stood up on the rubbish heap and stood in there declared who's in charge of the morning. That's the dominion. That you're not faced and controlled by your circumstances. You are in control, in charge of everything that happens in your life. You can't blame the devil because you are given the dominion and power to rule. Amen. Rule your own world. Amen. Amen. And we're going to go through some powerful, powerful teachings on the multiplication. Multiplication of God's seed. And it's going to be phenomenal. Amen. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Put your hand in your chest. Says, I carry the DNA of God. I'm conformed to his image. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm in control of my own circumstances. Come on, stand on your feet this morning.